Hello guys and welcome to episode 26 of the How to Make an RPG in Unity tutorial series. Now in today's episode, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be saving our inventory um, and our health and our dialogue numbers and our quest numbers and our saturation and all our other stuff. Um, actually, we might make this um, a three-part, we might actually make the saving system a three-part series. Um, just, because, just because saving inventory might take a bit longer. Um, but we'll see where this video takes us. Um, and basically, we're going to start with saving our um, our basic stats first, like our health, our saturation, and everything along with it. Um, and then we'll move on to saving inventory if we have enough time. Um, but don't worry, if I make this a two-part video, like a part, if I make a part three for inventory, it's going to come out very quickly. I promise you guys, this time I'm not going to like um, actually like you know drag it on. Um, and like <laughs> drag drag along the time that it takes for me to make a video. Um, however, what we can do now is we can see here that in our old video, we kind of had, um, let me see here. Right. So we made, we made a function called save variable where we can pretty much save any possible variable. We can save, we have a name for our save path. Um, or value, or sorry, or the type of variable is going to be, which is going to be an integer, a string, a float, or inventory, which we we will like, um, we will have um later, um, and then a value, which is obviously the value, um, and yeah. Um, so what we can do first is we need to figure out what data types we want to save. This will differ depending on how far you have come along in the game and like if you skipped any episodes or if um, you have any extra stuff that you just like added on your own. If you do, then this is like really up to you. Um, however, for me, um, what I have is you can see just player max, just health, right? Um, so I have health, I have saturation. Um, so I'm just going to make an example. I'm not going to save all of them. I'm just going to make an example and save, you know, the health and the saturation. Um, so we can go into player data and what we can do is we can, let's see if we've already referenced our save system, which we have. Um, so on load, we're going to basically what we're going to do is actually no on application quit. What we're going to do is we're going to do save dot uh, save variable and we're going to be saving so let's see what the parameters are the name uh, which is going to be health oh you have to add uh, uh, whatever they're called I forgot they're called um, but you have to add those because uh, you're defining it as a string and not a variable um, and then we got the type um, which is going to be variable type dot float uh, actually, was was our health a float? I'm pretty sure it was a float, but I'm don't quote me on that. Um, if you can, uh, yeah, okay, so it's a float. So we can go um, variable type dot float, and then what is our value? Our value is obviously our max health, not health because that's our current health. Um, so we're going to actually, you know, what? let's save this as current health for now. So we're also going to need another variable to save our max health. Um, however, like I'm just going to like do the basic ones. I'm not going to do like all the stats yet. Um, probably because we didn't move into like how stats will affect the game. And also because like this is basically just copy and paste. Like you guys don't really need to do much here. Um, and string value, which is going to be, which we obviously have. Um, and then... Let's see, transfer and transfer. I, I believe we can just set the last one as null. And it should save. Um, and what we can do here is cur health dot to string. And then we can parse it once we get the data. Um, yeah, we, we do parse it here. So good, we already did all of this last time. Oh my god. Um, that makes my job so much easier. So um, now we, that we have saved their health, let's just copy this and then paste this a bunch and we will call this saturation max health and 
max stats. And instead of calling this her house, we'll, uh, we'll call for saturation, current saturation. Also, we should probably do like a video where we change out the variables to the same thing because like, just realizing like how bad my variable names are, probably because I'm like rat rushing through this a lot. So like the variable names are very inconsistent, um, which we will fix in the future. Um, and then on load, what we're going to do is, I believe we have a load function as well. Mm, load variable s, so that's loading for strings. That is load variable f. So what we're going to do is we're going to load variable f. Um, so we're going to load variable f um, from save, obviously. Uh, actually, we can create a separate function called load. Load data. And what we can do here is we can just copy this and call the load data function. And then we can paste that here. And then what we're going to do is we can just save that load, load f, because we're loading a float. Um, and if we're loading a float, then that means uh, we're going to need a name, um, which is, in our case, health. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to load the health, right? Um, and I believe, do we do we have a return? No. Yeah, we do. Um, so basically what we can do is we can say per health is equal to that. And then that's pretty much it. And we just copy and paste this like four times because that's the amount of stuff that we have. Saturation max health and max saturation and uh, instead over here we have current saturation max health and max saturation so that that that's pretty much all we need to do now if i load into the game i should load into the past position um unless i don't um and you can see oh i died interesting um why did i die um, I'm actually confused at why I died because I shouldn't have died. I should have had like 2000 HP, I believe. Um, oh, for some reason, max health is at zero. Oh, right. Um, right, 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 right. Um, okay, so what we need to do is we need to load into the game and we're just gonna, I'll, I'll show you why, 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 I'll tell you guys why it did not work in a second. But if I make max health like a thousand, current health a thousand max saturation a thousand and then current saturation also a thousand um then when i exit and i'll go back in you can see on the side the values will always uh, will be there again i think the reason was because i got killed by the skeleton in one shot for some reason and then when i died and loaded out it kind of saved the data um, but you can see here if i take damage i'm at 990 right now if i load back in my max health saturation and everything should stay the same but my current health will be at 990 um but what we have to do is we also have to make the that the data like display it, right? Because right now it's not displaying it. So what we need to do is we need to load the data before everything else on voice does. So this is like the priority. Um, and now we can save that, save our script, and then go back in game and kind of see um, if this is working. Why is there a null reference exception? Right, mm, my bad. So we actually do not have save yet. Um, so obviously we need to reference our save save system before we actually, you know, call on it. Um, which is why that broke. Um, but if we go back now, it'll fix itself. Um, and if we press tab, let's just I I let's just make sure that our helmet equipping stuff still works. I believe the pants go in there. I forgot where the pants go. Um, did it go here? I'm, I I think I yeah, okay. I forgot where the pants go. Good. Um. Um. Right. So th those go there. But for some reason the pants are not fitting. Oh, I'll f I'll fix that bug later. But um. Um. I just realized that there was a bug there. <laughs> um. But if I walk up to this monster, um, it will hit me. You can see my value will decrease obviously um my ui is being updated when i load back into the game it should also it should again reflect that oh it does not interesting hmm. okay um so why would that be let's see um 
let's load into the game. Unless the data is, unless void application quit is not running properly. That's like the only reason I can think of. So 990, if I load back in the game, it should be 990 again. It's not. Let me add a print statement inside void on application quit. Um, and always guys, I get this in the discord a lot. Like a lot of people in the discord, they're like, they're asking me questions, but I can't help you. Right. If you guys do not know what the problem is and part of finding the problem is going into the, um, going to code and adding a debug function. Right. Right. So you can see, yes, it, it is working. Um, we are saving our basically everything. Um, now to figure out why this is not working. Um, um, oh, right. Because we're setting current health to be max health at the very start. Um, that's right. That is, that is probably why, why it's not working. Um, however, uh, we should probably also remove these print statements now because we know why it's not working. Um, and we can also remove this from the last video, all of this stuff that we no longer need. Okay. Um, so there goes our save system for basic variables like floats, strings, integers. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys get it, right? Like, um, if I get out and go back in like see it's, it's saved now um the only thing you need to do is you need to save all your extra variables like if you have a variable for sat for like stamina you need to save that if you want to save it of course if you have a variable for um i don't know armor actually no armor you don't need to save and i'll show you why because we will be saving our inventory and equipment slots so therefore you won't be, need to save your armor um However, let me look at my boots and see why they are broken. Oh wait, why were there pants though? Um, oh, trousers. Wait, I'm confused. Because I don't think, we only have four slots, so where do trousers fit in? Let me, let me pick up these trousers and figure out what the hell um, their equipment slot is because I forgot. Oh, there they are. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Um, right. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I got really confused for a second because it wasn't fitting in there. Um, but that makes a lot more sense now. Okay, so we have our equipping actually working. Um, now it's time to save like the fact that I actually did equip it. You know, like if I equipped um some armor i want to like keep the armor the next time i go on the game right if i picked up something i want to keep that the next time i go into the game so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new script um if we have not already i do not believe we have so we're going to go to objects and we're going to create a new script called items and um how this item script will work is that basically it's going to be of scriptable object class. So let me go back into our scriptable objects. Do, mm, object data right here. There we go. So you, you, you remember all of this. So basically you just copy the create asset menu, just paste that in, change model behavior to scriptable object, scriptable object. Um, instead of object slash type, we're gonna call this um, objects slash objects. Um, and basically what we're going to have is we're going to have one array of, um, game objects, I guess, uh, I guess, um, of actually, would we have, mm, should we have an array? Actually, no, let's not have it. We'll have a, an array of object data, um, called, uh, helmets, another array of object data for, Actually, mm, you know what? We'll just have one array. We're just gonna have one array called items. Um, and we're going to create a custom cat class. So we're gonna call this public class, um, item obj. Um, and we're going to add here item obj. 
is going to derive from here where we're going to have give it a name so public uh, string name um, public string tooltip in the future we will have tooltips on our um, um, inventory items when you hover over them um, of course um, and of course the object data uh, data cool um so there's that um now what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to come into here our objects and th basically this is what what, what is going to be here is this is going to be something that holds oh i spelled objects wrong you guys can change that i'm sorry i spelled objects wrong um but this is going to be called all items and what's going to happen here is we're going to lock this and we're going to create one one thing for each of our items that we have so we have one two three four five so we're just gonna drag these here um oh wait i'm pretty sure oh object that my bad um there we go that's better um i just i just i was wondering why it was not working um oh and of course we have to make it serializable so or else you won't be able to see it in the inspector um and now it should appear in the inspector unless oh shoot is, i think it's called is it serial oh do we have to serialize field sorry i'm i'm pretty sure we have to add serialized field to the variable no all right uh we have to add system dot serializable like that um oops, not there right there okay um and now you will be able to see um yeah so there we go now you'll be able to see this um and we're gonna add five items so for element one two three four and five we're going to drag this and this will be the leather chest plate uh tooltip we don't need that for now obviously you can add that if you want leather boots goes here leather helmet goes there leather pants goes there and wooden sword goes there cool um yeah so that's pretty much it um i wonder where a potato is i'm pretty sure we have a potato right where's our potato object i guess does our potato just not have an i forgot how we made the potato okay so it doesn't have an object data we're going to need to change that later um no i'm pretty sure it should because um um because what needs to happen is it needs to be registered which means it should have an object data script attached to it um Right, so <laughs> it's been so long since I've done this. Uh, so let me just find the potato. Um, there we go. There's a potato. Um, I wonder why it's not. Okay, let's just drag it back into uh, our go into scripts and then drag it into objects because that way we stay organized um and then we're going going to go into all items make this six um and then call this potato obviously just drag this in um and you can repeat this every time for every single item you have so if you have iron boots then obviously create a new item by increasing this number by one or two or three or four call giving this the correct name and then obviously putting in the data the the object data okay um so now what we need to do is we are going to um attach our all items into our save system script so we're going to go in here and we're going to call, call do something called public um object items like i guess that's what it's called all items and then we can go into our save system and then drag this in oops where are we not in here okay there we go save system and then we drag it in 
um, and after all items um, what we're gonna do is we're going to automatically save our inventory so this is not gonna be called if you want to make it a callable function then go ahead but I'm gonna make this mandatory um, because unlike save variable we know what we're trying to save so um, we're going to I believe we had an array that went through every single players um, uh, that that stored every single um, inventory slot. So if we go into player data, um, you can see here for equipment tab and inventory tab, there's just a bunch of object data. So what's going to happen is we're going to create a void. I'm going to call this save inventory. Um, and Actually, I guess we will have to make this uh, a separate function. It has to be called. Okay. Um, unless we want to reference everything, but um, we're just going to create a save inventory function. Um, and we're going to have basically um, a big mega compiler of every single slot. Actually, mm, no, we're not. We're not going to do that. We're going to have a separate one for our hotbar, our equipment tab, um, and our inventory. Um, so, uh, let's create, um, some separate parameters. So we're going to have object data, uh, hotbar, object data, uh, equipment, object data, inventory, and that's good. Those are going to be the race. So, oh, my bad. We already had curly brackets already. Um, what we're gonna do is um, for our, we're gonna create three for loops. So uh, also, if I don't think if I don't think I told you get this guys this yet, but you just type for and then double press uh, tab, it'll automatically make a for loop for you. Pretty neat. Um, but we're gonna go through here and set length. It's gonna be hotbar dot length for each loop. We're going to um, we're going to first. Uh, how will we do this? How will we save everything perfectly? Um, what we can do is we can have um, two saved variables. One, or actually, mm, I, let's let's do, let's do it efficiently. Let's do it. Let's do it the efficient way. So the efficient way is going to be um, pretty simple. Um, what we're gonna do is. We're going to copy. Uh, actually, we're just going to borrow this variable, uh, this variable saver. We're just going to uh, load variable or save variable. Actually, no, let's not. Let's not. I don't want to do that. It's it's too it's too grueling. Um, we're just going to save set a float, a very simple float. And what we're going to set this float as is we're going to set float at with um, the name being the slot number and then um, the basically the uh, variable is going to be the index of which item is inside um, the index of the all item array of which the item is um, is is that like the index of the item in the all item array basically uh, I don't know if that makes sense but it will definitely make sense once I read out the code so the name is going to be generated through um, hotbar plus i.2 string and then instead of the temporary value we're going to set this float as um, we're going to create another for loop actually so for every item inside of so this is why we might want to make different arrays especially when we get more items um that way we can like sort through uh, uh arrays through like their um their item type instead of like you know having to like search through the entire array i believe we had an item type uh whatever um but yeah uh we will do that in the next episode but we're running out of time here so um, we're just going to create another for loop instead of I, we have to make it X. So the variables don't con conflict. Um, and instead of length, we're going to make this all items dot whatever, what do we call this item OBJ dot length. And if, um, 
all item dot item obj x dot uh, data is equal to hotbar um, i then we're going to save this float um, at x um, now to summarize what we did here is we had a for loop that loops through the first you know hotbar the entire hotbar to find an, uh, a hotbar va um, slot with a correct with with a valid um, item once we find the valid item um, we're going to um, for every slot we're going to actually let's make this more efficient by just typing hotbar um, I is not equal to null so this way we actually check if there's an item there and we're not for looping every single time um, dot data sorry uh, wait sorry hotbar I is not equal to what no um, can be used as a statement um, but I am not oh sorry my bad <laughs> if hotbar I is not equal to null and only then are we going to only then are we going to create the for do the for loop um and if it is null then we're just going to not do the second for loop this way we save you know computing power um but um uh, we're going to do a second for loop and then once we find an all uh, uh, an item in all items that matches what we are we have we will save it um and then uh we're just going to duplicate this and then two times and instead of hopper this time, obviously we're gonna have equipment. Um, we're just gonna replace every word that it says hotbar. Uh, shouldn't say hotbar anymore. And this time we're gonna do inventory. And obviously right here as well. Cool. Um, that should be pretty much it um for our, this script um now we're just gonna have to load the data um and with the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do that in player data so on application quit we're just going to do save dot save inventory um that's pretty simple um um and obviously we have to input our three arrays which is uh hotbar Uh, equipment I don't know if it's equipment slots or if it's equipment tab it's equipment tab yeah well, I, I don't know what these variable names are I'm sorry guys um, and obviously inventory tab or just inventory I guess, apparently um, and yeah so now that we have saved our data we want to load it um, and we're going to do that in load data um, and we're just gonna pretty much kind of copy the same code, but not really. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to have a for loop again. We're actually, you know, let's just copy this code and paste, paste it. Um, but obviously the, this stuff is different. And we can remove the for loop because we know for sure that on lo upon load, there's not going to be anything there. Um, and what we can also remove this. We all we really only need this actually. Um, so let's just copy paste this this line three times. So two, three. Um, so there's hotbar. There's equipment tab. Yeah, even though it should be just equipment uh, following the trend, but whatever. And we have inventory. And over here we have inventory. I believe that's what we called it. Is that what we called it? That is what we called it. Okay. And instead of X, uh, instead of set flow, actually, we're going to get float. And we're going to remove this. Because uh, get float only takes one variable, 
and we're just gonna create a temporary variable so var x t or whatever i guess i i meant to type x but i typed t for some reason uh, so it's gonna be t now so var t is equal to that um and we're going to also reference all items here so we're gonna create our public uh, items reference for all items and then we're gonna create a do a for loop here so we're gonna do a for uh, less than I all items dot length dot uh, dot item obj dot length um, and we have to name this x to avoid discrepancies um, and if all items um, dot item obj x dot data is equal to t um, oh sorry if x is equal to t sorry if x is equal to t um, so if the index that we've uh, rotated to through the repeated calls um, is equal to the data that we have saved then we are going to load our stuff so hotbar um, i is going to be equal to um, uh, all items wait actually I'm stupid we don't even need to do this <laughs> because we already have the we don't we don't need to verify it we already have it I'm sorry guys I'm I'm, I'm really stupid today I'm sorry um, <laughs> is equal is gonna just be all items <laughs> dot um, item obj t uh, dot data okay guys um, Oh, I cannot specifically cast, I cannot explicitly convert type. Wait, what? Um, oh, right, because, um, wait, what? Cannot explicitly convert. Oh, maybe we have to do, oh, is it, is it? Right, because uh, we have to parse it um, into an integer. Um, that might be why. Um, so we can cop go back into our object data or no safe system script. And then where we parse our stuff. Um, so we can just do come here again. <laughs> My God. Actually, why do we save it into an integer in the first place? We should just save it into our float, float in the first place. We should just set it to an integer. That's so much simpler. Um, now we're going to player data. Instead of getting that, we're just going to get int. And there we go. There we go. Um, let me see. Uh, what is the problem here? Oh, that's right. We did not make this get int. And then instead of hotbar, we're obviously going to have equipment tab. And then instead of pop our inventory here. And that's pretty much it. We've loaded our inventory. Now we just have to make sure that our inventory is actually going to display. So we're gonna call the equip. Uh, actually no, we call load data really early. So it should it should equip um our stuff. I'm pretty sure. Where do we <laughs> where do we load our inventory UI? Um reload inventory, reload equipment, obviously. Okay. Let me just reload equipment real quick so we can just refresh reload hotbar we might have to call this before equip hotbar um just in case if we're we are equipping something then we're going to need to you know do that um reload inventory and reload our equipment tab and that seems to be pretty good um now the only thing we need to do is go into save system and drag in all items which we already did and then the final thing is in players we will need to drag in all of our items boom so now if we go load you'll see at the start we'll have oh crap um uh let me see why this is um Oh, 
Okay, so the reason for this is because this actually starts at index zero. What we're gonna need to do is we're going to have to save everything as a Actually, no, we can just do something very simple. We can just do minus one. Um, and what we can do here is we can just say um, if uh, t minus one is greater than zero, then we will do this. Otherwise, we will not. I'm pretty sure the reason it did that was because the default value for all player prefs, if there's like no player pref, that's what you have to check sometimes for has player pref. Um, but we don't really need to check it. Um, but if has player pref is minus one is greater than zero. Otherwise, then we're not going to do anything. Um, but now if you press play, it should work. Okay, it does not work. <laughs> um, and why is that? Let me, let me, let me, um, let me see. Um, so if t minus one is greater than zero, Um, let's see. Um, actually, what we can do is we can make it so that, um, so first we're going to have to clear all our player press. Um, and the way you do that is you go into window, um, uh, because we the reason we're gonna have to clear all our player preps is because um, we we are we just saved the fact that we had um, items on every single uh, one of our things every single one of our um, of our of our slots um, oh there we go edit and clear all player preps yes sir um, and what we can do here is we can just check before we load data uh, any data for that matter if player press dot has key then boom otherwise we're not going to do anything because it would just be a waste of time um and give us you know weird stuff that like um that that will appear like um the random <laughs> chess plays that just appeared um and we're getting an error here because, oh right, there should be a, semi, uh, a bracket here. Right. Um, and then we can just copy and paste this for every single one. And this way, that if there is no player, no player press stored, then we're not gonna load anything. Um, okay, so now we can press play. Um, and if we do pick up these this stuff, um, we should be able to go into the game. And index was out of array. Um, I think the problem is if we make this, we might have to make this plus one instead of minus one. I'm um, sorry, my math was off. Um, it does need to be plus one instead of minus one because, um, wait, actually, let, let, let's review the code and see what we need to do. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm really confused right now. Um, so. Um, right here we have player prefs dot set integer um, equipment plus uh, I dot two string. Uh, I was saying it to be x. X is um, default as zero, which means that if it is it, I don't. I don't think we need to touch it actually. We might. We could. We could just remove this. Um, and the reason that um we are leaving this is because uh, we actually didn't need this because um, instead of making it go minus one in order to not check, um, that's actually not a good thing to do because if it's zero, it's still a thing because zero is a thing. Zero is the value for the chess play. What we have to check for if there is if there is a key or not. Um, and in this case, there is a key. Um, so we have three of these helmets, which is not what we're supposed to have. Um, if we exit and then go back, you can see we have all helmets. And let's find out why this is. We can see that the helmet is the helmet is number one two. So the helmet is number two. 
Um, and why would <laughs> it would why would it spawn helmets? Um, so T would be loading. Um, actually, let us go into save that and see if we're saving it properly. So we should be saving it properly. Um, hop our equipment inventory that is in the right order. Um, oh shoot, my bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I made an error here. Um, instead of hotbar I obviously it should be equipment I. If any of you guys caught that, uh, good for you. Um, I did not catch it, so you're smarter than me. Um, that should fix our problems. Um, however, no, that will fix the problem for random items spawning in, but everything's still helmets for some reason. Uh, so we're gonna clear all player press again to make sure that not everything's are not not everything is helmets. Um, so we can pick all this stuff up. Um, and then we can press tab. Um, and then. Let's leave the game and then come into the game. So you can see they're all chest plates now, but the, everything is kind of being stored in the right place. I can't click on it for some reason. Um, but the positioning is correct, um, if you know what I mean, right? The positioning, like I put something in the bottom um, and it was there. Um, now what we need to figure out is why the hell it's not... Um, not saving the correct items. So we're saying the value to be X, which is um, right way. <laughs> we need to add two equal signs here, guys. Um, <laughs> guys, like <laughs> I've made like so many like um, easy to fix mistakes. Um, if you guys catch any, like please just feel free to like, you know, correct me in the comments and tell me I'm stupid. Um, but Let's look at this. It should save correctly now. Um, okay. Well, it does not. Um, everything kind of disappeared. Uh, so let's just come back here again. Um, is equal to equipment I. Then we will do this. Um, otherwise, if it's equip equal to equipment I. We do this. Um, let's make sure that equipment is actually the equipment object that it right equipment tab. Yep. Okay. Okay. That w I was like afraid. Um, I had the wrong thing for a second. Um. Second of all, let's see. Let's re let's review our code here. So we have um our hotbar and our equipment. Um, one thing that could be wrong is the variable names. Um, we could also, we should probably also change these so there's no discrepancies. Um, so instead of I, then we can rename all the I's to P. And instead of X, we can make this like G or something and then rename all of them to G. Um, and then instead of I here, we can have Q. Um, and then instead of X here, we can have T. Perfect. Oh. Okay. That might solve our problem. I don't think it that was the problem, but it might. Um, so I'm just gonna clear all of our player press rate real quickly. Um, and now if we pick up our stuff, we should be able to, if I put that there and put that there, I should be able to load in the game and it should still be there. Um, so that's kind of weird. I, is it, is, um, only my chest plate was stored. Um, if I clear all the player preps and just don't move anything, um, Will it be stored or will it not? Let's see. No, it won't. Only the uh, only the chest plate is stored. That's very interesting. Um. I feel like we might be looping through this 
uh, wrong. Um, let's look at the object data script or the item script. Item obj dot length. Um, let's let's add a print statement here that prints out everything. Again, this is a good thing to do when debugging. Um, uh, all item, we can just kind of print this. And then we can do that here and do that here. And so X, this is obviously going to be T and this is obviously going to be G. So now we can make it, we can clear player prefs again and see what the problem is. We can clear a console and let's go in, pick up all of our stuff, leave the game. And all you see here are leather chest plate, leather chest plate, leather chest plate. Um, that is not correct, right? Um, there are, oh, hmm. I think I might have found out why. Guys, um, aside from the spelling mistake here. Oh, when the sweet potato were switched. Guys, do not make the mistakes that I am making right now. It's it's um it's quite embarrassing actually. <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know what to say, guys. Um, I, I <laughs> um, I'm, yeah, I, I made a mistake. Um, but now it should work. Um, if I just put this here, um, we can get out of the game and come back, and boom, everything is safe. Thank God. Um, but the last problem that we're gonna solve today is that you can't actually click on the items, and the reason why is I believe I suspect is because you go in the game um you can go into player and you can see that although everything is here not everything is here for the slots um wait actually no everything is here for the slots right the images are definitely here um or else you wouldn't be able to see them and why would we not be able to click on them then um is the question and let's go in here reload equipment we have all these reloads um, and we drag an item um, we are looking for um, our equipment our chest um, do, do. Mm, let's see here uh, when we are dragging equipment, we are getting slot data, which is, um, right. So we are also going into the individual slots and inserting data there, which means we also have to come here and insert the data into there. Otherwise we won't be able to drag. So what we have to do is we have to go into the hot bar. Um, where is that? Where's our hot bar slots? Uh, hot bar slots get components dot game object oh what what is a hot bar slot hot bar slots are their images so we should be able to get that game object no nope. how do we do it here oh right we have to get the specific index num number obviously because it's an array <laughs> um guys I am making so many mistakes here today, um, but that is okay. That get component, um, and we're gonna get the component for slots. Um, and after we get that, after we get the slots in there, we're gonna uh, access the da ob object data, and we're gonna set that to be equal to all items dot item obj t data. Cool. Now we can just paste that here. Instead of hop our slots, we have equipment slots. Um, and instead of here, instead of hop our slots, we'll have inventory slots. Perfect. So I believe those are all the slots we had. And we'll work on chests maybe next time. For now, we're not going to save chests um, because then we get into like individual chest naming and stuff. But um, 
We, we, we're we gonna go to do that in another video. Um, but now you can see we can drag our stuff around. Like now we can move my pants there. If I don't want my pants to be there anymore, I'm moving it in. Um, ooh, items are now duplicated. Um, right, so now items are duplicated. If we go back in game, um, they are still draggable. Um, you can see here, we've duplicated our items yet again. Um, a reason for this might be because, let's just clear, clear our player press again. And look at our script um, and see what is wrong. Um, so we might have to perform a save every time we drag, which I do not want to do. That would definitely fix this problem, but I do not want to do that. Um, hmm. Let, let's try, let's try, let's try making it so that every time we drag, we save. Um, it's not going to go well because we'll be lagging out. Um, but if we do not lag, then why not? Um, we'll just do that for now. So we can put this into all into a big function, um, and we can call this public void save inf load inventory. Oh wait, shoot! This is the load inventory function, not the save inventory. My bad. Um, but it, it doesn't hurt to put it in a separate function, anyways, to make the code look cleaner. Um, so we can just go here, save inventory, uh, save dot save inventory, and we're just gonna paste this inside each of the possible outcomes. Um, obviously, we need the parameters, which we can copy from here, and then scroll all the way down to our error, um, and then we can come here and paste it inside of each one of these events or possible outcomes of us dragging an item. Um, we did that. Obviously, for some of these, we don't need to put. Um, like, I'm just gonna like do this real, really quickly to like show you guys a fix, um, because I do not know when the next video will come out. Um, uh, as we just did inventories, uh, invent inv inventory saving. Um, I don't know when the next video will be out. Um, but this should fix our problem. So if we go in now and we pick this up oh that guy's gonna attack us um but if we save this potato interesting um it should not be duplicated anymore um right but it is um interesting that it is see look it's, it's getting duplicated again if i move this here it will also get duplicated Right. Um. Oh, right. That is because we do not actually clear the data um, once data is has been saved. Um. Uh, I I think that should be fairly easy to do. So I'll do that in this video. Um. We can delete all of these. Um. Sorry, I'm like. Not functioning as well today. <laughs> um. So we can save this. Um. And what we're going to need to do is after we drag an item to another place, we're going to have to clear our data. So what I mean by that is uh, we can come in here and we can just set that if there is a data there, then we will, you know, obviously do that. Um, but otherwise, we're going to remove the player pref, um, that specific player pref. And the way we can do that is we can just do player pref dot delete key hotbar plus i dot two string and that's it um that's pretty much that's, that's pretty much as simple as that um now we can obviously do this more efficiently like we can check um if an item is actually there then only in, and only then will we actually delete an item uh, um or sorry if there's no item there sorry if there actually no this already technically checks for us so we have no problem there um what am i saying <laughs> Uh, we can copy inventory in here and then equipment in here um, and then delete this print statement 
and voila, we're done. Um, we can clear the console and then we can go in and what should happen is if I move this here and I exit the game, it's not going to be there anymore. Oh, not only that is there. Mm. Right. We need to make this an else, sta else statement because otherwise everything is just going to get deleted. No, no matter if it, there is an item there or not. So only otherwise, um, if it is not equal to the inventory, um, are we going to delete it? Um, wait, actually, this doesn't make sense. Why are we doing this here? Um, sorry, sorry guys. Um, we shouldn't be doing the delete key in there. And the reason we shouldn't be doing the delete key in there is because we need to delete the key um when whenever we detect that there is not an item there um and the way that we're going to detect if there is an item there or not is with inventory q is not equal to null if it is equal to null then we're going to keep this um so we just copy this delete that paste that delete this copy this this and then boom we should be done so now we can test it out and put my pants on and my chest plate on and now when I go in it should not be there however for some reason the <laughs> the text is still there but that's okay uh, oh, that's right. That's because we're, we're hovering near it. Um, but now you can see they automatically, or stuff automatically deletes itself. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll probably check out saving chests or maybe doing something else. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, let me guys know in the comment where you guys want this to go. I will also definitely add chopping wood and like fishing, I believe was the other request that you guys had in the comments. Like that was like, those were some of the requests. So I'll add those um, in the next episode or maybe in the next few episodes. Sorry, I didn't get around to them because like we had so many things we need to do. Um, but yeah, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for, stay tuned for the next one. It'll come out sooner than the last one. I promise because my computer broke down. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.